If a full-time eBay seller started from scratch, how quickly could they grow a brand new eBay account? Well, I've been a full-time eBay seller for the last three and a half years, and a few weeks ago, I decided to open up a brand new eBay account with the goal of generating $5,000 in sales within my first 90 days of selling. After four weeks, we're almost on track to hitting our $5,000 goal, so this week has never been more important. Pretty crazy to think that we're already into week five of this challenge. I've actually made a playlist of every single week uh, on the YouTube homepage. So definitely go and check that one out. Start from episode one if you've missed any of these uh, series episodes. But um, we had a sale come through this morning, which was actually a week one find. Uh, it was the Australia Dolphins swim team shorts. Now, these have gone on to sell for $45, but they've taken 33 days to sell. Uh, the fees and the post, the cost of the goods, we made $22 in profit. But... I actually wanted to have a bit of a chat to you guys today about the other listings that are yet to go on to sell from week one. So let's have a bit of a deep dive into those. We've got three DVDs that haven't gone on to sell, Hannah Montana, Sliders and Spooks. As you'll see there, they are all part season sets. Uh, sliders right there, one to three, that's actually a five season TV show. Hannah Montana, there's a number of seasons of that. And then to be honest with you, Spooks, three, four, seven and nine, I probably shouldn't have purchased that one. Um, that was definitely grounds for me to leave behind. So I think it's because I'm only buying part season sets that these DVDs are sitting around for a little bit longer than normal. As you'll have seen if you've watched any prior episodes of this series, the DVDs that I'm selling are complete series box sets. That stands you the best chance to get your items to sell quick and that's ultimately what this challenge is about. It's not so much about getting really low price points and selling it off cheap, it's about buying the right quality items with a good healthy average sale price that also turns over for a good sell through rate. That's what I'm out here trying to look for and I definitely think I didn't do that with these three purchases. I should have left them all on the shelf uh, because clearly after 35 days with an attractive price point, the sell through rate just has not been strong enough and it's obviously due to the fact that they are a part season set. Um, the other one as well which is really interesting here is the Asics Gel Quantum 180s. I actually bought both of these in a thrift store for $15 a piece um, way back in week one and these ones haven't gone on to sell. They're the, they're the second group of listings that haven't sold out of everything else that I bought. So it's really nice to see that the majority of what I did buy in week one has already sold with Within 30 days um, but I think the reason why these shoes haven't sold is because I didn't give them a clean I didn't like I, I didn't put them in their best possible condition um, and that was just putting them into a washing machine on a really low uh, low temperature a low spin rate that would have brightened them up and make them appealing in the photos um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that this week I'm gonna go and put them into the washing machine give them a bit of a clean and then try and hold the same price that I've got and uh, when we go out and do some thrifting now I want to kind of avoid all of that and I wanna go out and find high quality items with a good sell through rate and a great average sale price. So let's get out there into the thrift and we'll see if we can improve on our sourcing habits from week one. Here's something that sold really well for me in the past, corduroy style beer hats. I've got this Victoria Bitter VB hat here. This is only $5, but I should be able to convert it on past experience into about 35. Katmandu is a really good clothing brand. This one though for $25, a little bit steep on this occasion, but you can flip this for about 50 to 60 bucks. So that's a good brand to be on the lookout for. I have gone ahead and picked this up though, guys. For $45, we've got a Drysabone Grosvenor jacket. Excellent condition. Comps on eBay were talking about $150 for that. So I am absolutely thrilled with that purchase. I've also gone ahead and I've grabbed these. These are the Sorel winter hiking boots um, or snow boots, I should say. Some crazy comps on eBay, upwards of $300 brand new. So I'm going to go ahead and buy these for $30 and try and convert them into $200. These are some big, big buys, guys. So I think there's a really important lesson in there, guys. Don't be afraid to pay up for really good quality items. It's not about quantity. eBay is not quantity. It's just going out there, assessing the situation on what's in front of you and buying quality only and, and not being afraid to slightly pay up to get your hands on something. And, and those two items there are just such a good example to go by. Uh, but back when I first started, I can tell you right now, I would never have bought those two items um, just through inexperience. So, you know, by doing this starting from scratch series with a bit of experience under my belt, hopefully I can fast track the process for you guys uh, and get you going, oh, you look, it's actually okay to do that. And if you use the e-profit calculator when you're out and about, uh, that'll make the job so much more easier because you'll know exactly how much money you're gonna make. And then it just comes down to sell through rate. Uh, but you can determine um, sell through rate by checking the eBay sold comps as well. Uh, by just referencing it to what's actually active at the moment versus what's sold over the last 90 days. So I'm, I'm absolutely stoked with that. 
and I've got another store now that I'm about to head into and hopefully we can find the same sort of stuff. I just spied these. These are the Asics Gel Nimbus 24. They're a pair of women's running shoes. Um, $18 is a little bit, a little bit taxi, but um, they're in great condition as you can see. Um, women's size 10 and a half. Probably convert these into about $60, I think, based on the condition. So there's gonna be almost a double your money situation on this. So I'm pretty happy about it. I had a look at the other shoes over in the corner there, and unfortunately this is pretty much all we're working with, but still one's better than none moved my way into the dvd section and i found a couple of box sets which definitely caught my eye sex in the city unfortunately 35 dollars way too steep of a price point i had to put that one back but i did find this as well harry potter the complete eight film collection you can get about this done for about 50 on ebay so 25 dollars unfortunately it's not going to leave enough profit for me to go ahead with even though the sell-through rate would have been good this however even though it was priced at 25 dollars it's worth going ahead with the purchase. One, because it will get a quick sell through rate, uh, but two as well, because the average sale price on eBay for this item is actually more like $80. So I was really happy with that find. Uh, I made my way into the shoe section in this store and I actually found these Nike Pegasus 38. Um, you get about 50 bucks for those. So buying them for $12. Pegasus is a really good pair of Nike shoes. So that was cool to see, really good size as well. Um, I found these, but I put them back on the shelf. As much as they were in great condition and a really good price, it was just the size that put me off. And then these Asics Gel Keanu 21s, only $8. I actually am going to price these up for $65. There's a collector's market out there for Keanu's. And then I found these as well. It was a pair of Doc Martens, which always sell well. $45, it said as is, and it was because the zipper, unfortunately, was dog chewed. So I couldn't go ahead with the purchase on those. Um, awesome pair of shoes in another store here. We've got Keen for $9. Really good hiking shoe brand, guys. If you're unfamiliar with your hiking shoes, Keen is one of the better ones to be selling on eBay. Merrill is another really good brand as well. So a couple of good little opportunities there. We should go on to sell them well. This was the second sale from the weekend, and it's actually our biggest sale in the second store to date. Uh, we sold the helmet that we bought last week in last week's episode. Um, paid $20 for this, if you remember. Uh, in the thrift, I was a little bit unsure as to whether or not to go ahead with this. I've never sold a lacrosse helmet before, but yeah, I know motorcycle helmets do really well and I just thought we'd have a bit of a stab, but I checked on eBay and there were comps going for around the $400 price point for brand new versions of this helmet. Um, this is obviously a used helmet. It's a size youth as well, which I didn't actually like. Um, you know, anything youth related is always gonna be slightly less um, than an adult price point, but we got a $100 sale price for this. And it's not going to cost too much to put into a box, I don't think, either, Courtney. Mm. It's probably going to cost 15 to $20 to ship. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, say $20 worth of shipping, $20 purchase price. I'll put the numbers up on screen, but we're going to make a few dollars here, which is pretty cool. And it actually wasn't the only sale that we got from over the weekend. You guys might have remembered this cave troll, this Lord of the Rings action figure that we picked up in last week's episode. We paid $4 for this. It was just sitting in a tub of toys in a local thrift store. Uh, it sold within three days for $40 which I thought was brilliant. This, if it was complete, was about a $100 toy. Um, there were some really good comps if it was in its complete version, but this one was pretty much stripped down and it was only worth about 40 bucks. We got the full asking price. So fees, post, cost of goods, $19.25 for that, I thought was excellent. So there were a couple of other sales as well that I'm going to quickly take you through. Some video games actually went on to sell. We got a $25 sale for Transformers. Um, that, was, that was a decent game that we only bought for a dollar. Uh, Dark of the Moon uh, on PlayStation 3. We also sold a brand new The Last of Us on PS4. That was again another dollar. We turned that into $30. Um, the Queensland Maroon State of Origin shorts were only bought in last week's episode. It sold within 24 hours on eBay. So that's a good one for anyone in Australia uh, to try and find. $32 we ended up getting for that. I think on average it's about a $35 item. So that was cool to see it sell in 24 hours. Uh, and then we also sold um, the complete series on DVD of 24. Um, that was bought for a dollar each, eight dollars in a thrift store. We turned it into fifty-six dollars and ninety-five cents. I think one of the biggest things this week for me has been trying to balance uh, the side hustle of this eBay store, this second store, with the ultimate main focus of my main store um, or job. I guess this is just a little side project that I'm doing for a YouTube channel, um, but it's taking up a lot of time, and it is very much just a side hustle for the main store, if that makes sense. That's the priority still, working on the main store, creating these YouTube videos. So it is still related, but it is really hard to juggle just life in general with this added second store pressure of trying to maintain numbers and, and hit certain metrics, etc. 
Um, and I think that really relates to anyone else out there that's working in a nine to five job and also has a YouTube, uh, or sorry, an eBay page. Um, it's really quite difficult to balance it when it is just a side hustle. It's not the main priority. And for me, I've always had eBay and YouTube as my number one priority. So I've never had to try and deal with the imbalance of that. Um, it's just always been my first focus. But this second store has really made me kind of realize the difficulties of having a number one priority and then having this as a second priority. Um, and I think it's just a case of just putting some really good um, goals in place and some, some rules, I guess, to make sure that you stay consistent because you'll hear it all the time. You know, people on YouTube tell you to be consistent and when it's your number one priority, it's much, much easier to be consistent. But when you've got everything else going on in life and you've got a nine to five job elsewhere, you know, to say, okay, I'll be consistent on my side hustle, it's a lot harder to do. And I've definitely seen that here with my second store. Um, and I'm also juggling things outside of, you know, work. Like there's a social life and, um, yeah, I run. I'm training for a marathon right now and there's a lot of work com and commitment involved in, in doing that. Um, you know, maintaining catch-ups with my friends and family as well. Um, so there's so many different facets that are going on in everyone's life to, to juggle the side hustle of eBay that requires so much dedication, focus and energy. And then also as a beginner to not even know what you're doing. Like I can definitely... That's why I think this series is so, so important because it's a way of trying to speed up the learning process to allow you to be quickly more efficient to make more money, which is ultimately the reason why we're trying to do this side hustle. But after five weeks of doing this, I can definitely relate to the frustrations of it just being a side hustle and it only being a part-time thing. Um, but I'm going to push through it. I'm going to push through it by continually trying to find that $700 worth of stock that does seem to be working. Um, but I'm probably going to bring in a new rule for myself to keep that consistency. And I'm just going to try and list every couple of days. Um, rather than trying to, which I've done this week, is just list everything in one go. I waited until day seven of this week and I've listed up everything that you've seen in the video. And that, that's not really helpful to try and generate a bunch of sales. Um, you want to be a little bit often. So I'm going to list every single day for this next haul. And I'm actually going to go out immediately now for, for the next week, week six. And then I'm going to list all that out consecutively over the course of the next few days and see if that has an impact in sales. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd touch on that because it's definitely been the first sort of sort of whack, I guess, to, to momentum and motivation um, when it's only been, a, I guess, a side hustle for me. It's still been a really good week though. Um, if we pull the numbers up here, we've been able to do $328.94. So yes, there was a drop off last week's $487, but I'm still really happy because the goal was $375. Um, so to hit 328, you're only 45 bucks away from, from achieving that goal. Um, the average sale price sat pretty firm at $47. Uh, fees was 50 bucks, 15.5%, which is pretty standard. And we had seven sales as I touched on earlier. So we had a sale a day for that length of time. So um, overall, it moves us up to a grand total of $1,458. And we've sold 32 items. So 32 items in 35 days, starting from scratch. Uh, it's, it's not too bad with a $45 average sale price. So it's just going to be a case of continually going on and working on little bits and pieces and trying to stay motivated, as I mentioned, um, you know, to keep ticking along with this series. But I'm really happy with where things are at and I'm happy the fact that you guys are hopefully enjoying it and getting some value out of it. I'm going to leave you with a video right here, guys, uh, to tune into next, but appreciate you tuning into this one and we'll see you soon.